Today I am sharing the video that this whole YouTube channel was actually started for. So I wanted to share the story of how the Lord brought us to our home that we're living in now and how he moved us and how he opened doors for us to move to the country. So I might get a little teary eyed and a little emotional because it's just been incredible and it completely blew our minds the things that the Lord did for us and how he worked things out so forgive me if I get teary-eyed I might need to stop and get some Kleenexes I don't know I don't know but I'm gonna try to stick to my notes so I can stay on target and not get distracted but we'll see so here it is the story of how the Lord brought us to our home and made room for us Whenever we first got married, we had tried to live in the country. My parents and my grandparents both had offered us land and we tried. We did everything we could before we got married trying to find a way to make it work. But the finances weren't there, the doors were not opening, so we said, okay, if we're having this much trouble, then it must not be the Lord's will for us to live here. So we said, you know what, we'll just live in the city, which is where my husband is from. He grew up going to his grandparents' home in East Texas, summers and weekends and all that when he was little. And so he always wanted to live in the country. It was a dream of his. I grew up in the country, I'm a farmer's daughter. And I honestly couldn't see myself living anywhere but the country. The Lord had other plans and the things that he did for us while we lived in the city were incredible. He taught us so much about trusting him and how he will take care of us and provide for us. So we had just kind of shelved the dream of living in the country. So you know what, Laura, that's what we want, but more than anything, we want your will. We want to be in your will and we want to be where you want us to be, where you can use us the best. So we just enjoyed going out to see my parents, going to the early lease, and that's how we got our country fix. <laughs> but in, I guess maybe it was late 2018, early 2019, we were at church and we were given a word from the Lord from a man of God that we love and respect very much. And he told us that our house would sell and that we would step from one home into another. And that was very exciting because we weren't, at the time we weren't trying to sell, but we knew eventually we would have to sell. We were living in our first home and it was a really cute little 1100 square, 1163 square foot vintage 1950s house. And we had started to do some work to it, <clears throat> but it needed some updates, but the main thing is we were outgrowing it very fast. <laughs> we had three children in the space of about four years, and it was a three bedroom, one bath home, and we were busting at the seams pretty quick. So we were, we wanted a new home, but at the time it wasn't a financial possibility. So we thanked the Lord and we held on to that promise for nearly three years. I started house shopping the next week. I was excited because when the Lord tells you something, you can take it to the bank. So I started looking and I was like, I, I know we can't afford anything right now, but I'm going to go ahead and start looking. So I looked and we thought, well, maybe we're, we'll just look around here because we are very involved in our church. But the more we looked, the more we realized none of the houses, even the ones that were out of our price range, had what we wanted. We wanted acreage, we wanted land, we wanted at least five acres, and <laughs> you just don't find that in the city. Even where we were, there were some places that had acreage, but there was no way we could ever afford them. And we decided to go ahead and do some remodeling on our home to help it sell better. There's nothing wrong with that. So we did, we remodeled the kitchen completely, which is 
an incredible story in and of itself, which I will tell one day and show pictures how the Lord remodeled our kitchen, provided everything we needed. And it's a, it's a crazy story, and I will share it one day. We put shiplap all in the front room. We put some decorative faux beams. I mean, it turned out really cute. I'll share pictures one day. But we decided, you know, let's just go ahead and do that. It'll help it sell better. There's no, there's no reason not to. And we looked and we looked and we looked. We still haven't found the place. And then, let's see. Maybe it was about a year later, a year and a half-ish later, <clears throat> the Lord gave us another word by the same minister. And it was, the Lord was going to increase our cattle, which we have cows. Um, we have some of our own cows in with my mom and dad's. And the Lord was going to increase our time in the pasture. And because we love love to be out in the pasture with the cows just riding around as you've seen we spend a lot of time just driving around outside on the property enjoying it and we were very excited about this but we also knew from a practical standpoint we couldn't grow our cattle operation like we wanted to unless we lived nearby our cattle operation so we could be present because <clears throat> when you have cows you have to be present and my dad can't do all of it by himself it would be unfair so we knew that if the cows were going to grow we would have to be with them and one thing led to another and we realized you know what if the reason we can't find anything here in town is because it's time for us to move to the country and whenever we had gotten married i knew that it would be hard on me to move to the, to move to the city after growing up in the country my whole life and i prayed and i asked the lord to please take away the desire to live in the country until or it, until it was time if it was time and if it was never supposed to be time to never let that desire come back and I was happy and content in the city for about nine and a half years. I was, I loved it. It was wonderful. It was great. I loved it. But in the spring of 2020, we had gone to see my mom and dad. And as we were leaving, it just washed over me so strong. I almost started crying. I did not want to leave. I did not want to go back to the city. I wanted to stay in the country with my babies. And <clears throat> it was overwhelming because I hadn't felt that in years. And I knew then that the Lord was starting to make a way for us to move. And so I talked to Jacob and he was like, are you serious? And I said, yes, I really think it's time for us to move home. Because anytime he would bring it up, I was like, oh no, nope, it's not time, it's not time. He'd been ready to go since we were married, but it was never time. And so I said, I, I want to move home. He said, okay, let's do it. So we, we looked at it long and hard and prayed about it. We talked about it with both sets of our parents, with some of our close friends, and with our pastor and his wife. And whenever we mentioned it to them, they immediately were like, oh, do it. Yes, go for it. This would be incredible for you. They were 100% for it. They saw it as an incredible opportunity and they agreed with everything that the Lord had said that yes, everything pointed towards moving to the country. So we were ecstatic. We were so excited because when it's the Lord's will, all of the important things agree and everything agreed. And my grandfather said that yes, his offer of a couple acres was still good and we could put a home there if we wanted so we were super excited about that we we're going to be literally five minutes down the road from my parents we were excited okay we were going to do this so we put our home in town on the market <laughs> and within 48 hours we had an offer that we accepted and we sold the home. With the work that we did to the house, 
and with the way the market the housing market was we ended up more than doubling our initial investment on the home we never dreamed that was possible but we did and because of that we were put in a much better position to move forward we had originally said that we would just put a manufactured home on the land that my grandfather was going to give us. It was out in the middle of a hayfield, beautiful location, but we would have had to have done so much work to get it ready, but we were, we were okay with that. It was awesome. We were ready and we had shopped around a lot and we found a home that we liked and we went and we saw it and we were like, this is it. This is, it. this is the house for us. If we hadn't been willing to wait for the manufactured home to be ready, we would not have been in a position to have moved forward with the property where we eventually live now. So even though we did not get that home, it was set up in order by the Lord for us to find that home and be willing to wait so that everything would be in place when it was time for us to get our current home. And we sold our home in July and we had a cash buyer for the amount that we wanted and he wanted to close in two weeks. <clears throat> so it was crazy. It was an absolute whirlwind. It worked out where we were able to live in the house on the farm where I grew up for a couple months while we waited. And the manufactured home would not be ready to be delivered until October because things were so backed up. So, but we decided, you know what? It's worth it. We'll wait on it. And that would give us time to get the driveway, the septic system, all that kind of stuff put in. But then <laughs> we had a surprise. While we were waiting and trying to figure everything out because it felt like everything was going so slow like it was just taking forever for us to get anything done everything was moving at a snail's pace and honestly i was getting frustrated because i needed to see progress but that's just me but we were laying in bed one night and i was scrolling through facebook and lo and behold a property that we had looked at the follow the previous summer was back on the market and when we had seen this property the year before we both just grieved because it was everything we ever wanted but there was no way in the world we could afford it I mean realistically there was no way but it was everything. It had 30 acres. It had a cute little two-story house with high ceilings and tons of windows. Everything that we had talked about whenever we had said, whenever we build our forever home, we want these things. And we looked at it and we looked at it and we looked at it and we grieved. And then we just said, you know what? It's okay, the Lord has something for us that's even better. So we were laying in bed that night and I was scrolling through Facebook and the property was back available. It was back available and for less money than it had been listed for the year before. And I was like, oh my word, Jacob, look at this. Can you believe it? And we were so shocked because how could anybody pass on that place? There is no way. I mean, we couldn't believe it. And even more than that, it had, it was on the market for like 10 days. And with the, the way the housing market is right now, and when we were buying and when we were selling, I mean, two days you would have offers and contracts. And I mean, it would be done. So I, told Jacob, I said, just for grins, let's run the numbers and see if this is even a possibility. I said, let's just see, you know, we probably have the down payment because of how well we did selling the house in town. Let's just run the numbers and 
see what the monthly note would be. You know, just why not? We were in the numbers and it was a possibility. We had the down payment and the monthly note was actually going to end up only being just a little more per month than what the note on the manufactured home would be due to the, the differences in loans and all that. So we said, you know what, if we can get financing. So we contacted the guy who got us the financing on our original home in, in town and we sent him all the information and all the pertinents and he emailed Jacob back pretty quickly and said, oh, I think we can make this happen, absolutely, and get the numbers where you want it. So, we kind of stopped and <laughs> we're, our, our heads were kind of spinning because it happened so fast and we said, okay. That was on a, that was actually a Sunday night and then we managed to get a showing the the following day the following afternoon so on a Monday and we actually knew the people that we bought that owned this place so they showed us around we're just amazed as we walked around it had outbuildings it had a shop it had what I would eventually turn into my feed room and the house it was smaller than what we had wanted about 1500 a little over 1500 square feet but the potential the bones of the house were good and with it being a house built on blocks you can add on easily and there was just so much potential here and the land the trees 30 acres it was just incredible so we left that evening and we prayed and we told the Lord, Lord, you've got to let us know quick because we need to know fast because this is everything we've ever wanted. And we need to know fairly quickly, especially with the financing. And we still had things going on with the manufactured home that we would have to shut down. And we need to know. And on the property, there is a pond. You've heard me talk about it before, and it's actually like a square thing with a levee and then kind of has a little island in the middle. And we're pretty sure it's left over from the oil field days. Maybe it may have been like a slush pit or something like that. But anyway, it's a very unique feature. And whenever you look at the aerial photos of the property, it's there. You can see it, it's very distinct. And we went to church, because it was a Wednesday, and the same man of God that had given us words before, he was there that night. And they knew that we were in the process of moving and we'd sold our house and we were working on getting a manufactured home and all that. And, and they asked, he asked my husband, how well, how, how's the house coming? And we hadn't said anything to anybody yet. We may have said something to his parents, but we hadn't said anything because we had just gone and seen the property. And I said, oh, you know, it's coming. I wasn't gonna say anything. And Jacob said, well, actually, let me show you something. And he pulled out his phone and he started scrolling through the listing pictures. He's like, we just went and looked at this. And we're trying to decide if, you know, if we can do this, we're, we're just, we just found out about it. And he was scrolling through the pictures, showing him different things. And they got to the aerial shot of the property and Jacob Pointed. I said, we don't really know what this is. I mean, we think it's left over from the oil field days or something like that. And the minister said, oh, I know exactly what that is. And we thought, okay, good. He's fixing to educate us and let us know exactly what this is because he's worked in a lot of different fields of industry. And he said, no, you don't understand. A couple weeks ago, I had a dream about y'all and the Lord woke me up and I started praying for y'all. 
the Lord showed me y'all standing in the middle of this property saying, this is it, this is it, and crying and praising the Lord. And that was our confirmation that we needed, that we were to pursue this property. And it's amazing how the Lord takes care of his children because two weeks, two or three weeks before when the Lord let this man of God know, we didn't even know that the property was a possibility, but the Lord already had already sent our confirmation and our answer before we even knew that we needed it. So we pursued, we got the financing and everything fell into place and we signed closing papers on our promise that we had been waiting on on October 27th, 2021. It was quite a few years of waiting and believing that the Lord would make good on his word and he did above and beyond what we could have imagined, more than we ever thought possible. And every day, still, every day, I find another thing here that I just, I'm like, Lord, you did this. We're still discovering things that we, it was like the place was designed for us every day, still. One of the times that the Lord gave us a word about our house was that it would be turnkey. It would be complete. We would not have to do anything to it. It would be move in ready. And that is exactly how it was here. We didn't have to build a shop. We didn't have to do anything. We were able just to move in. I mean, I painted. We painted, we changed some colors, we took the bar out in the kitchen to make room for a table, but those were not major things. Those were preferences. We didn't have to do those things. It was ready to move in. And the week that we were preparing the house to move in, I was cleaning windows and cleaning things up, getting ready for paint, and I realized the windows, which there are tons of windows, which is wonderful. I think every room has at least two windows. And I was standing there at the window and I realized the height that the windows were at are lower than in the other homes where I had lived. And I had always loved windows that were set down low. And the windows in our house, in our living room, are set down low. And that wasn't even something that was on my wish list or my it has to be this way list. It was just already prepared. The Lord had prepared a place for us. And when you wait on the Lord, when you do things according to his will and you wait on his timing, in the end, it's so worth it. And it's so much better than you could ever hope for. And that's what we've had here. That's what we're discovering here. And I can't wait to see what happens next. It has just been amazing. And I am so excited about our life here.